Hello to all of my compounding pharmacy friends and colleagues. My name is Brian Prince. I'm a compounding workflow and lab design consultant, and I specialize in USP owner compliance. As issues come up, I like to share them with you, the audience, as informational videos. So I spend a lot of time speaking with engineers about USP 800 compliance and how do we move air, what is negative pressure. And I think there's a little bit of a, a misconception about room pressurizations, but the easiest way to achieve negative pressure in your USP 800 hazardous drug spaces is to exhaust more air than what you supply. And I'm going to show you some examples in just a minute, but essentially we're going to do, we're going to walk through a quick calculation that shows if you put X amount of air into the room, it's X times a percentage, and there's no set percentage because it's based on the cube, the length, the width, the height of the room, and we'll go through that calculation. But really the point of this quick video is to tell you and to show you as pharmacists and technicians and the designated person, how do you achieve negative pressure so that you can have conversations with your local general contractors, your architects, your engineers, any of those folks that are going to come in on the project. So let's walk through an example together. I thought this would be a great project to show you how to achieve negative pressure. So what we're looking at here, we would call this a floor plan, very standard two-dimensional floor plan. And you see this room right here in the middle is going to be our USP 800 non-sterile hazardous compounding room. You can see coming in through the sliding doors here, we've got it at negative pressure to 0 0.01 inches of water column to 0 0.03 inches of water column, which means that this room is negative to its adjacent space. And we would be measuring that via, you know, some sort of room pressure monitor or however you want to monitor that to make sure that in fact you are maintaining that USP 800 standard. So this door is actually infiltrating air from the hallway. All doors are going to infiltrate or in a positive pressure clean room, exfiltrate, which means that we're going to share air between rooms. And so in this scenario, some percentage of that air is actually coming in and we account for that on the test and balance side. But I wanted to show you this, how we would handle this particular room. These corner pieces here that I'm highlighting in blue, these are our low wall uh, exhausts in this situation. And I'll show you a little bit more in a, in a 3D rendering what those look like. So what I did is I took this particular block and this is the actual block. My software will allow me to draw that block in its actual dimension. It tells me what the square footage of that space is. Um, and so I actually rounded up. So 48 is what it's showing. I rounded up to 490 to keep the numbers even. The ceiling height in that room is actually nine feet. That's what the client told me. So I multiply the square footage times the ceiling height and I get the cubic footage, which is 4,410 cubic feet. Now, USP 800 in that chapter um, defines for us in table ones and table two, whether it's non-sterile or sterile, what our minimum number of air changes are. And I know that in an 800 non-sterile hazardous compounding room, I must maintain a minimum of 12 air changes per hour. So what I actually do then is I take the 4410, I multiply it times 12 and then divide it by 60. 60 is not actually shown here, but that's the number of minutes in an hour. That number never changes, so it's a constant factor in our equation. So again, square footage times wall height equals cubic feet. Cubic feet multiplied by the desired number of air changes divided by 60, and we end up with a minimum design criteria of 882 CFM, and that is going to be our actual supply. Typically, uh, you would measure uh, with a flow hood, and I say you would, the certifier would measure or the test and balance company would measure at the ceiling grid the actual supply number and tell you what the number of air changes. And some have said, well, on a negative pressure room, we actually want to measure the exhaust. Well, that's not always the easiest thing to do. So typically, if you are achieving 12 air changes per hour at the ceiling, and we know that it requires more air out of the building to achieve negative pressure, then of course, you're of course, you are going to be above 12 air changes per hour. So if you can hit it at the supply, you're definitely going to maintain it at the opposing side, which is the exhaust side. So wherever they measure, you should be okay. Now, if you've ever heard me speak or seen any of my other videos, you know that I tell you, you never in design, you never design an engineer system to its lowest common factor, which would be 12. If you design something at its minimum spec, at some point during the year, due to some sort of factor, 
uh, that may be controllable, may not be, that room will more than likely fail. So I tell folks that when you're designing your 800 non-sterile hazardous drug compounding room, you actually would design it at 18 air changes. Then people in process in July and August and all of those other factors will actually cause this room to settle somewhere in the middle, which is great because then we're a minimum above our minimum number of 12 and we don't have to worry about this room falling out of spec. So we're looking at approximately 1300 CFM. Now, the geography of this particular project was that it was actually in a very stable area, somewhere in the Midwest. They don't have a lot of fluctuations and relative humidities in summer, stuff like that, which is really great. So we actually ended up settling on a unit at 1200 CFM. I'll do another video where I talk about sometimes you actually may want to go above that number depending on where you are located geographically. So let's just kind of walk into this room and see how these numbers fit out. So remember that, you know, 1200 CFM exhaust number or supply number, then we'll back into an exhaust number. I'm just gonna kind of fly over here just for fun. You can see this is actually just coming over the building. This is the roof structure. We'll come back to that. And now let's go inside. Let's walk inside this particular room. And then we're gonna go around to our low wall exhaust actually let's talk first about our supply there are supply diffusers in this and i space them out and i'll do another video in the future that talks about how this is a chest match the ceiling profile is actually a chest match but our design goal of a compounding space we definitely know this in sterile but i want to carry this thought process over to non-sterile our design goal is to move the air from the ceiling down to the floor now per usp 795 which is also applicable in USP 800 as a non-sterile standard, we must clean that floor every day. So if we're dealing with powders in a non-sterile environment and technicians may breach containment or powder exposure or whatever the case is, we wanna make sure that we push that particulate down to the floor. Maybe it'll statically charge to the floor, maybe it'll impact that floor. But if not, then what will happen is it, number one, it'll make it easier to clean or number two, we'll send it out of this low wall exhaust grade. And this just happens to be called a lattice style. I like these because I think they're easier to clean than those um, horizontal east to west curved slats, which will cut your gloves and sometimes your fingers and they're just not easy to clean. So I like this lattice style. So I used to tell folks that to achieve negative pressure, your percentage, because zero point zero one inches of water column is not actually a lot of negative pressure. And I would say that's about 15%. Well, I've come to find that that's not necessarily true because based on the cube, based on the ductwork, based on the height of the roof, based on the, all of these different factors that are sometimes not within our control, that 15% is not a good rule. But we do sometimes talk about that. I've seen it as high as 40% to achieve such a small minor negative pressure of 0 0.01 inches. But in that scenario, remember I told you we put about 1200 CFM on the makeup air unit to supply the air. And I'll show you a makeup air unit in just a moment. And so another 15 to 20 to 25 percent above that is about 1600 CFM. So 750 here or 800, this is kind of like a low or a, a medium or whatever that number, the, te the test and balance company will actually back into this number. So these are approximate numbers that we give to the engineers or we give to the HVAC people so they know what they're working with because the duct sizing is all contingent on how much air and at what pressure we're gonna move through. So this is that one in the corner that I showed you that I highlighted in blue. I'm gonna show you what the other one looks like. It's in the opposing corner. So you see, there's a second one right there. And so I'm actually going to then hopefully get good dilution in the ceiling, which you can't see. There's actually four small 24 inch by 24 inch supply diffusers. And then in each opposing corner, I've got a fairly large uh, low wall exhaust grate here. And then again, there's ductwork hiding behind this drywall chase or an FRP or whatever the surface is. And then I'll show you how those are connected. I don't typically like to move more than 500 to 800 CFM through a low wall exhaust. I don't like to get up to a thousand because you'll find sometimes if the ductwork is not properly sized, or you're moving too air too too fast, is that the low walls will actually start to whistle. And nobody wants to work in a compounding room where your walls are whistling because that then gets to be a little bit old. So you can see in each of the corners, both opposing corners, we've got, we're gonna try to balance this. It may not always balance out to be an even 50-50, but that is the design goal. And so let's go up to the roof now. Let's talk about how we're achieving negative pressure. Number one, I told you that we're putting the air supply in at the appropriate number of air changes. I showed you how to figure that. And then I've got these two low walls. I'm just gonna rotate around here, just orbit around. 
And here's the second one. I'm going to highlight that one. These are our two low walls that we've talked about. And notice that they both join into this red duct. I made it red just to show you that that's exhaust because I felt like the color would make it easier. And then that goes up to our roof line, our flat roof line. If you've got a pitched roof, obviously we have to make changes in how we do all this, but this is just a very typical flat roof structure. And then it goes through optional HEPA filters. And I'll do another video in the future that talks about optional HEPA filtration. It is not required for USP 800. It was actually in an earlier draft version, did not make it to the final, which is perfectly okay. And then that goes to our utility set blower. Some people call this a snail shell. It could be a belt drive, it could be a direct drive, all of those wonderful fun things. And then, then that goes up to our stack height. And our stack height is typically based on a local stack height requirement. So this does vary. I've seen it as low as 36 inches, 48 inches, 10, uh, 10 feet, 20 feet, it varies all over the country. So it really is based on the stack height requirements. So you can see we've got those two low wall exhausts getting pulled into our duct, making the transition to the roof through, pop, through optional HEPA filtration. And then it's gonna get ejected at a certain velocity out of what we call this stack here via our exhaust blower. Now what's supplying that original 1200 CF, and then I told you is this makeup air unit. And I've told you before in other videos, and I've said it many times at conferences and white papers, that if you constantly and consistently throw air out of a building per USP 800, quote unquote, the CSEC, the secondary engineering control, which is the room, is externally vented. That means you're throwing perfectly good air out of the building and you cannot Peter and Paul and pull it from other places. It's not going to happen or your entire building is going to go negative. So in this situation, especially with 1200 CFM, which is a fairly significant amount of air, we did in fact put the makeup air unit on top of the roof to do the supply factor. So I'm just going to rotate this around. You see we supply in, we get our proper number of air changes, and then with those low wall exhausts, again, moving the air from the ceiling down to the floor and then ejecting it out. And you will notice that if we add up 800 here plus 800 in the other corner, that's 1600 CFM. And remember I told you this makeup air unit was 1200 CFM. So again, we're pulling out more air than what we're putting into the space. And that is what is achieving negative pressure. I appreciate you joining me on this video. Sometimes this can be more confusing or less confusing. And so I ask if you have any questions, certainly give me a call at 228-239-6842 or email me, brian at compoundingworkflow.com. That's brian, B-R-Y-A-N at compoundingworkflow.com. Thanks for joining me.